If there's one thing that I'm good at in life, it is winning Champions League titles. But today, I'm taking things up a notch. I'm testing myself by trying to win every Champions League title in one video. But I can't decide which teams I'm managing. We are leaving that to the wheel. And we're starting today's video off with the Asian Champions League. And the league where- It's gonna be the A-League! Is it gonna be the A-League or the Chinese Super League? It is the A-League. Please give me the Western Sydney Wanderers. Please give me the Western Sydney Wanderers and not Sydney FC, not Sydney FC. Okay, it's another one of my favorite teams, rivals, sort of, it's MacArthur. So we begin our journey trying to win an Asian Champions League with MacArthur. And of course, I had to make my manager Pitbull because Mr. Pitbull himself is Mr. Worldwide. Oh God, we have got some work to do with this team. We are absolutely crying out for a striker here, ladies and gentlemen, which is why we have decided to sign Felipe Mora, the Chilean striker from the Portland Timbers. He wants an Australian experience. He wants to head down under, so that's exactly what we're doing. We get a star striker. We've got our first transfer as well out of the club, lads, as our captain, Tomislav Uzkok, is off to the Newcastle Jets. And it's time for us to immediately improve at the centre-back role, get an upgrade as we bring Cameron Burgess back to Australia, signing him from Ipswich Town for just under a million pounds. The disrespect to knock about a hundred thousand pounds off his value though. Come on FIFA, I'm not that bad. And we didn't have a crazy amount of money to make an upgrade at the left back role, but we still got an upgrade nonetheless. It is the Englishman Ben Purrington joining us here from Ross County for 500,000 pounds. We've made some decent changes to the side. Still a lot of work to do if we want to become Asian champions, but I'm happy with how we've started life at MacArthur. The goal for this year though, has to be finishing the A-League in one of the Asian Champions League spots. Basically, we have to win the league or finish in like the top two or three. <laughs> this is, oh, this was never gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. We haven't even made the playoffs here in season one. We finished ninth in the A-League. That is embarrassing. Western United have won the regular season and the A-League champions are Western United in an all Melbourne affair. I mean, we're a long way away from getting invited to the Asian Champions League. You know you're struggling when your highest goal scorer, like nobody in your team hits double digits. That is embarrassing. Mora, what happened? Four goals. We need a big shift in season two. I intend on going hard in the paint this season but I want it to be strategically hard. We have signed ourselves a player who may just be the highest rated player in the A-League officially now. It is the Spanish goalkeeper, Gieta from Crystal Palace. We get him at MacArthur as our new marquee goalkeeper for just 590,000 pounds. He may be a little bit older, but he's 79 rated. That is a great upgrade. And I'm gonna clean out this team. I wanna get as much money in and as many of our Deadwood players out and Jake McGing is upon that list. We're also saying goodbye to the left back, Ivan Vujica, who is off to Andorra. Some things in life just feel like a no brainer, ladies and gentlemen. Jackson Irvine on a free makes just so much sense. And it is an absolute honor to have one of the vibiest players in world football back in Australia. And our former starting goalkeeper in Philippe Curto, he's had a great career in the A-League, but he's heading back to Europe off to Blackpool. Also saying goodbye to our center back, Alexander Susnia, who's off to Shanghai. Really hoping we don't face him in the Champions League at some point. And just like that, we're gonna get ourselves a star center back as well. It is the Irishman, Jimmy Dunn, who's making the move down from QPR to MacArthur. We sign him for 1.7 million pounds. It's time to say goodbye to Kieran Backus. Pretty big move for him. He got a move to FC Basel. I was not expecting that. Little loan move here for Jesper Weber off to Gillingham. But the clean out continues. It is Arubali off to Wellington Phoenix. Jonathan Asperopotamides is off to Sepsi. And Craig Noon is off to Andorra. And we're gonna use all that money to make our final signing of this opening window for season two. It is Lockie Wales joining us from Western United. Surely we've got to find ourselves in a title challenging position after this window. Surely, come on MacArthur, get us Asian Champions League qualification. This is so much better than last year. We have finished third in the A-League regular season. We haven't got the automatic spots though. I think 
if we're gonna be playing Asian Champions League next year, we have to go all the way. So we won our elimination final against the Central Coast. We beat Melbourne City and we're off to an A-League grand final. We're versing Adelaide United and we have won an A-League trophy. We've won the toilet seat and we're gonna be playing Asian Champions League football next year. Come on, let's go. And finally, we've had a player hit double digits. It is De Villa, De Villa who gets 12 goals. Jackson Irvine, nine goals. I think though, we're gonna have to go for a new striker next year because Mora is not doing it. And we're gonna have to find the goal somewhere because De Villa is retiring. Oh, he's been our best player and he's retiring. One thing I'm quickly learning with these A-League teams is you can get incredible value by the free agents. Example one, we've got ourselves a new attacking midfielder in Kaku. He's 78 rated. Normally in an, like a big team rebuild, this would be a whatever signing. This is a game changer for us. Another no-brainer here, get me Jamie McLaren. I want Jamie McLaren. This would be a huge pickup for us here. Come on, J-Mac, return of the Mac, whatever. You can have your 26,000 pounds signing bonus. We're going to get Jamie McLaren to MacArthur. We've got ourselves a new left back into the club as well. We are doing business here. Mr. Worldwide stamping his authority. Adrian Marin, now a MacArthur player. But this right here would be the big one, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle Walker. Can we get Kyle Walker to MacArthur? Come on, Kyle. Oh, do I just... I'm going to offer a little bit more money. I know it says 7,800, but I've been burnt from that a few times in this video so far. 13,000 pounds a week to get Kyle Walker to MacArthur. They want a little bit more, and I'm okay with that. What a signing Kyle Walker is. I mean, now that we're here, now that we're in Asian Champions League contention, I want us to go deep, if not all the way. This team that we're building is working towards that quite nicely. And I think it goes without saying, I want back-to-back A-League titles. But because of the way the calendar works, we have to wait until the second half of the season to find out our Asian Champions League group. But it looks like Al Shabab are the team to beat heading into next season. They have won the Asian Champions League. No! Oh, my earth has been shattered. The game hasn't given us Asian Champions League football. It's not like the real world. It's not like real life. They've only given it to the top two in Adelaide and Melbourne City. They don't care that we won the overall A-League. They've only given it to first and second. So we need to make sure we finish top two this year. Oh, that has just ruined my plans. We finished first in the regular season. We have won the minor premiership. We have won the premier's plate. We are playing Champions League football next year. Now let's go make sure that we have won ourselves a second A-League title. Elimination finals, obviously we weren't involved in. Semi-finals, we lost! to Western United. Wow. Western United versus the Wellington Phoenix in the final, and it's the Knicks who win the A-League. Both teams, it was fourth versus sixth. That is embarrassing. But it is what it is. We completed our objective. We are in the Champions League next year. And Jamie McLaren was the signing we needed. 17 goals from him this year. That is phenomenal. McLaren with 10, Kaku with 10. Good to see the new lads stepping up. It might be frowned upon, but I'm continuing this. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. A new goalkeeper in Andre Blake, a new center midfielder here in Jordi Alcivar, and a new center half in Callum Chambers. This team just gets better and better. Surely this team can go and win an A-League title. We could go undefeated realistically in the A-League this year. This could be the best team on paper to ever play in the league. I'm just filthy that we're not in the Champions League until the second half of this year. All right, we finally made it, lads. First place last year means we've been placed into Group A and we're gonna be facing, I mean, I see he's probably retired by now, but Al Nassar. We've got Wuhan Three Towns, Al Nassar, and Ulsan Hyundai in our group. This is a very challenging group. Let's go see if we can get ourselves to the Champions League, the Asian Champions League knockout rounds. Ulsan Hyundai have absolutely gone off. They have gone undefeated, six wins, zero draws, zero losses. Wuhan, the complete opposite, zero points is embarrassing. But on our half, we've made it to the quarterfinals and I'm absolutely stoked about that. And we're taking on another Hyundai club, another K-League club, but it's not Ulsan, it's Yonbok. Yonbok Hyundai in the quarterfinals. Fair play to Melbourne City as well. They've made the quarterfinals. And we have absolutely crushed it in the A-League again this year, meaning we've qualified for next year's Asian Champions League. So the elimination finals, Wellington and Adelaide progressed. We took down Wellington in the semifinals and we're facing Melbourne City for an A-League title and we absolutely crushed them. 
4-1 to win another A-League title. Jamie McLaren, absolute start at 20 goals. This Alcifar guy, 16 goals and 10 assists. We are building something special, and I cannot wait to see how we go in next season's quarterfinals of the Champions League. We are saying goodbye, though, to a whole array of players who refuse to extend their contracts. Kyle Walker and Gator are retiring. Al Hassan Toure, I'm sad about him leaving. And then Mora is signed pre-contract somewhere else. So saying goodbye to all four of these guys. Just because we're in a great position with the team and how we're going so far doesn't mean we can't improve. A new left midfielder here in Alvarado and a new right back to replace Kyle Walker in Jeremy Ngakia. Bring on the Champions League quarterfinals. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. First leg away against Yunbuk Hyundai, grabbing our passports and heading to South Korea. Can we get ourselves a strong first leg result? Come on, MacArthur. It's a one-all draw. It is a one-all draw. We have to head back to Southwest Sydney and get a result. Everything hangs in the balance right now. We are off to Campbelltown Stadium, trying to get ourselves through to an Asian Champions League semi-final. Come on, MacArthur. Come on, the Bulls. Let's get it done. We get it done. It's done. Getting it done in the 79th minute. You love to see it. Oh, we take down a huge opponent in Yonbu Hyundai. And Melbourne City keep themselves alive as well. Two Australian teams in the semis. It just had to be, ladies and gentlemen. MacArthur versus Melbourne City in the Champions League semifinals. This is massive. This is a landmark moment in Australian football. We are here at Campbelltown Stadium taking on Melbourne City, the team that we defeated in the A-League Grand Final last year. Can we get the result? against City. The scoreline is a 3-0 win in the first leg. Jackson Irvine and Kaku on the score sheet. And we have one foot surely in an Asian Champions League final. Let's not bottle this. Let's get ourselves into a Champions League final here. We're away down at Amy Park in Melbourne. Let's get MacArthur through. 3-0 up and it's a one-all draw in the second leg and that is fine by me. No injuries, no suspensions, and we're off to a Champions League final. Oh my god, we're going to be versing the Indian team. Mahoon Bargain have beaten Al Halal 3-1 on aggregate. I was not expecting that. Can we become only the second team in Australian football history to win an Asian Champions League? We are about to find out. I feel the weight of an entire country on my shoulders right now. Jackson Irvine holding it up brilliantly there. Jackson Irvine puts it on a platter. Kaku! Oh, oh my god, what was that pass across? Petrados. They get the shot off and they've taken the lead. Oh, we're behind. That was terrible. Alvarado out here to Marin. Marin in the box. Going back. Pass it. Shoot it. Shoot it. There it is. Was that Jamie McLaren? It was. J Mac ties this one up straight away. Oh, don't let them get themselves back in front here. Do not. They put it on a platter. Save from Blake. Get rid of that one, Marin. Get rid of that one. What is that? What is that defense? Two players. I'm spamming A. And we still get out jumped. No, that is embarrassing. Play it through. Please be on side. Please be on side. He is. And we tie it up. Get in there. Come on, let's get him on the counter, lads. Wales. Hoofing that one up. Jamie McLaren knew it was coming. Jamie McLaren with the touch. Jamie McLaren with the goal. We have the lead with 20 minutes remaining in this Asian Champions League final. Blow the whistle, referee. There it is. Oh, that was such a stressful final. But we have won an Asian Champions League with MacArthur. That's one Champions League title down, two to go. What's up next? Champions League, UEFA Champions League, or the Copa Libertadores? It is going to be the Copa Libertadores. So because of the way licensing works this year, in career mode, we can only take over Argentinian sides. So we're going to be going with one of these teams from Argentina. No way. Oh, that is actually hilarious. That is actually hilarious. It's going to be Estudiantes, the club that won our Global Imperialism series. So it's gonna be Mr. Worldwide, Pitbull himself, taking his talents to Estudiantes. This team we've inherited here at Estudiantes isn't terrible. I mean, there's definitely some work that we're gonna to have to do if we wanna be champions of South America. But I found myself in worse situations. But because we changed regions, we have 
come in like over halfway through the season, basically the end of the season. We finished 15th in the regular season and we're currently fifth in zone A of Copper de Primera. I don't know what that means. I'm soon gonna learn, I assume, but yeah, we're not looking great. And this year's Copper Libertadores or Con the Ball Libertadores is between Internacional and Flamengo. And from what I can see, we were not involved in the competition this year. But anyways, we're gonna move on and begin our progress towards making Estudiantes champions of South America. But if you guys are enjoying this video so far and you aren't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and scorpion kick that subscribe button down below on the push towards 500,000 subscribers this year. Help us get there, we're getting closer. But our first signing during this era at Estudiantes is for a young Argentinian center half. It is Alfonso Garcia, who we've signed for 12.5 million pounds. First man gone though is Ivan Gomez. I just really want to get some money together so we can sign a big name striker. Not even big name, just an improvement. Regardless, another 1.7 in. It's not the world's craziest transfer by any stretch of the imagination, but it is still an upgrade up top. It is Federico Girotti, the Argentine, joining us here from Tayerez. The thing with the Argentinian league is I don't know if our team is good enough to be pushing for the top of the league right now. We could, we could finish first or we could finish last and I genuinely wouldn't be surprised. So let's just hope that the FIFA gods are on our side and we're towards the top. Hey, that is so much better. That is so much better than I was expecting. Okay, we have finished fourth in the league this year. That is brilliant. I'm hoping and praying that qualifies us for next year's Copa Libertadores. Again, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Copa de Primera is something completely different to the league because we were in zone A, but then teams like Boca Juniors and stuff are in zone B. So I'm guessing that's just a cup. So the only thing we need to really focus on is the league itself. Mendes and Girotti, our two strikers, have not very solid seasons though. We're bringing him back to Argentina, ladies and gentlemen. It is Emiliano Martinez. He's 85 rated. He's 35 years of age, but we have got him on an absolute steal. And that is just 5.2 million pounds from Liverpool. Trying to get as much money in though to make some big changes this year. An extra seven, sorry, 9.1 million pounds from Burnley is gonna go a long way in the Argentine league. And an extra 1 million pounds in here for our backup keeper. Never heard of this guy, but an upgrade to the back line is certainly what the doctor ordered. And we are gonna get him on a very cheap discount here. Christian Castro Devonish, welcome. We're also saying goodbye to Gonzalo Pinero. Turning to what I know works, I need a new left back in this side. Enrique Ramirez looks like an absolute stud here on the free agents list, a stud regen from Colombia. And I'll accept those terms. Sparta Rotterdam are chasing him down as well. Enrique Ramirez, welcome to Estudiantes. I am pushing for the top of the table. I am pushing for a title because I want us playing in Copa Libertadores next season. Pause it right there, pause it right there. I've got good news. I didn't realize until now, but we are in Copa Libertadores, Combo Libertadores this year. And we actually topped our group. Maybe we're a chance of winning it with Estudiantes. But we have got Boca Juniors in the round of 16. It is an all Argentine affair. Mate, this is such a massive opportunity. This is a huge challenge as well at La Bomanera, taking on Boca Juniors. Here we go. First leg, come on Estudiantes, the scoreline, it's a 3-1 win. Oh my God. Come on lads, we've got the advantage. Get ourselves through to the quarterfinals here of Libertadores. The scoreline, it's a 3-0 demolition job. I didn't even expect us to be in this competition this year. And now I think we have a great chance of winning it and getting ourselves another Champions League. They don't want it to make it easy, do they? We've gone from one Argentinian giant to another. We've got River Plate. First leg is at home. I would love, I would absolutely love another three nil result. Easier said than done against River Plate though. They got Bruno Zuccolini in there and the scoreline, it's a one all draw, yeah. It's a one-all draw. This is so much tighter heading into this second leg. Here we go. Massive game against River Plate. Everything hangs in the balance. We need to win this one, ladies and gentlemen. We can't afford a slip up. Come on, Estudiantes. Get it done against River Plate. We get it done in the 88th minute. Men 
Mendez, you beautiful man. Mendez is going to send us to a Libertadores semi-final. Oh, my God. So the final four, Santa Fe, Bolivar, Penarol, and Estudiantes. Let's get the job done against Santa Fe and get ourselves through to a Libertadores final. First leg is on the road and I want an absolute demolition job, ladies and gentlemen. I want us to get it done and I want us to get it done comfortably. Here we go against Santa Fe. Come on, Estudiantes. Oh, it's not a, we should have. Oh, that's gonna annoy me if we bottle the second leg. We dominate the first one, but it's only a draw. Nah, you're actually taking the piss. That is, that is ridiculous. For this second leg, a semi-final, our best player, Rollheiser, is on international duty. The Argentines, oh my God, Argentina have taken him on international duty and we're gonna be without him. Nah, that is, that is, oh, that is stupid. We've got to sub in a 71 rated right midfielder. That is absolutely, oh, I'm filthy about that. I'm simulating, I am not confident now. Oh my God, we went on penalties. We win on penalties. Oh my God, we're heading to a, oh, we're heading to a final. Oh my God, that was tight. And we're gonna be taking on Penarol, who won seven three on aggregate. That is madness. We need to win this final as well because we have finished fourth. And I don't know if that means automatic qualification to next year's Libertadores. I am thanking my lucky stars that there is no international duty during this final though. Rollheiser is in the final. Let's go. I could be absolutely tweaking right now, but why do I feel like Estudiantes and Penarol played off in the Imperialism series? Do not concede an early goal. Do not. They have a shot. Easy save for Martinez. Good footy. Great footy. Come on. Bianchi. Bianchi, it's 1-0. We take the lead in this Commonwealth Libertadores final. Go on. Rollheiser, got the pace to get rid of them. Rollheiser squares it beautifully. And that's 2-0 two. Two after 25 minutes. Get in there. Oh, what a leap. Bicycle. Goal. So Mendes makes it three. Let's go. That's surely going to be Libertadores done. There it is. Libertadores done and dusted. We have officially won the Champions League of South America. Get in there. Now let's figure out who we're gonna win the UEFA Champions League with. Is that gonna be the Prem? It's the Prem. Ooh, okay. English Premier League, that is, that could make things a lot easier depending on who we get. This is either gonna be a blessing or a curse because if we get a smaller team and they've been relegated, that's gonna suck. But we're gonna be with Brighton or Everton. We're going with Brighton, okay. Mr. Worldwide is about to become the new gaffer of Brighton. Please be in the Premier League. Please be in the Premier League. Don't be in the championship. Way, hey, we're in the Prem. And because of the calendars, we actually come in 12 games into the Premier League season here in November. So let's see if we can have a second half of the season surge. Our team is nothing to turn your nose up at, but there is definitely some work to be done. I'm definitely making Evan Ferguson our star striker though. The January window is here and with the little bit of money and time we have, we need some reinforcements. A new young right back into the side in Jesus Ayala from Newcastle. And ladies and gentlemen, I had to get somebody in that I know and love. It is going to be Benjamin Rollheiser, the absolute stud from our time at Estudiantes, is going to join us here at the Amex. Oh my god. We have had an absolute stinker of a season here. 15th with Brighton. Yeah, we've got some work to do if we're going to complete this third Champions League. Top of the table though, who's the dominant force? Okay, it's still Manchester City. Not much has changed. Evan Ferguson literally carried us this season. We have got some serious work to do moving forward. I need to lock in and get us up this table quick smart. I want to completely revolutionize this Brighton team this year and make it Mr. Worldwide. We're going to sign ourselves an English center half in Cameron Kemp from Aston Villa. And we're also going to sign a French center midfielder in Andy Diouf from Lille. First man out this season though is Yasan Ayari off to Wolverhampton. And our center half Yusuf Ndayashimi is off to Bayern Munich. Latest man packing these bags is going to be Victor Malejo, our fellow, people's fellow bald friend. 
He is off to Marseille. And I really want to get a new shot stopper in. So we're saying goodbye to Freddie Woodman. As far as I'm concerned, nobody in this Brighton team is safe. Billy Gilmore is evidence of that as he's off to Toulouse. But we're going to get ourselves a new goalkeeper here. It's another player that I'm getting from Aston Villa. They have a nice young core of talent, but it is the Hungarian shot stopper, Mahali Kiss who's going to be giving us a little kiss at Brighton. Come on, lads. I really want to get this one over the line. Let's get Lauren Ulrich into the side to complete our midfield and our business this season. Yep, I'm accepting that. We're going to sign Lauren Ulrich, 83 rated from Real Betis. Get in there. There is no way I want us to be near the relegation zone this year. I want us up and in the Champions League spots, man. I want that third Champions League title desperately. It's not Champions League qualification, but we have done so much better this year than last. Sixth place. I think that means either Europa League or Conference League, dependent on other results, which I'm a big fan of. Would rather Champions League, though. All of a sudden, I'm just going to change the video title to a I won every Europa League. Evan Ferguson, I knew I needed to lean on this guy. Again, has had an incredible season. 87 rated, 19 goals. Let's keep it rolling with him next season. Going to let this Adam Marisic guy, going to let the Montenegrin left backs contract expire. But come on, lads. Let's get ourselves into a Champions League spot next year. We desperately needed a right midfielder in this side. And I wanted to continue the Argentinian trend of this video. So we're going to sign Matthias Sewell here from Almeria. 50, 61, I should say. Million pounds to get him into the side. But this kid is a stud. Trying to get some money in to get another center back into the squad, though, which is why we're saying goodbye to Alzete. That's going to see us add an extra 10 mil to the bank. And that is hopefully going to give us enough money here to sign Ricardo Jimenez from West Ham. Accept my offer, Ricardo. He accepts it. We've got ourselves another starting star center half. We did pay 36.2 million pounds in transfer fees. This team is coming together real nice. We need Champions League football, though. We know we can get up there. We've got players like Rollheiser. Doesn't have many good years of growth left in him. We need to strike while the iron's hot. I would absolutely love for us to go on a Europa League run as well. We're in the Europa League. I know it's not the Champions League. I know it's not the objective, but I'd be over the moon if we went well in this. Come on, lads. We're in the Champions League. We're in the Champions League. We are in the Champions League next year. That top four race came down to the wire, but we have finished second in the Premier League. Ironically, I'm pretty sure we got less points this year than last season, but this year we finished second instead of, what, sixth? That is, that's wild to me. How do we go in the Europa League? Did we win the Europa League? No, Inter did. So we went undefeated in our group stages, only three goals conceded. Round of 16, we got eliminated by Marseille. And looking at that aggregate score, we had the advantage heading into the second leg. That is not ideal. Thankfully, though, we didn't need to rely on it to get Champions League qualification. Evan Ferguson, I love you. Ulrich, that is such a good signing as well. 18 goals for him. 15 for Facundo Buonote. That This is great. 25 for Ferguson. He's one of the best strikers in the world at this point. Man, oh man, am I ready for Champions League football next year and a shot to complete this challenge of winning all three Champions League trophies. The only position I desperately want to upgrade this season is the left back role. We've had Trufer, who has stayed 84 rated since the day we took over. So we're having a meeting with Carlo Ancelotti and trying to get Fonzie into to the side. I want Alfonso Davies. I offer 90 mil and Carlo Ancelotti bites. Oh my God. I don't know if you saw, but I started to adjust it to say 100 mil because I thought I would have to pay over 100 mil, but they take 90. Come on, Fonzie. Join us here at Brighton. Join us and help us get our final Champions League title. I'm giving you all the money in the world, my friend. 300,000 pounds a week. Come to Brighton. Yes, he does. Welcome, Fonzie. That is genuinely the signing, I think, that gets us into contention territory. Because, I mean, just look at this team. This team, it is sick. But on the flip side, look at our Champions League group. This group is sick as well. Bayern Munich. We're going to have to get through them. They're the big dogs. Salzburg and Mitterland, we cannot sleep on them. Let's see if we're playing knockout round football with an impressive Brighton team. Yeah. Oh, my God. What? 
Okay, number one, the dream is alive for us. We didn't lose a single game. Bayern Munich, though. Bayern Munich came last. No, that's actually hilarious. Bayern Munich last. We're through. Who do we have in the last 16? If you looked at the bottom of the screen, you will see we have Athletic Club Bilbao. That is very interesting. Taking on the Spanish outfit. We are the kings of winning the Champions League in every continent on our first time of asking, can we keep the trend and the streak alive in European football? It's Bilbao. Round of 16. First leg is on the road in Spain. The tie is a belter of a tie. It is a three-all score line. And we have everything to play here as we head back to South England. Second leg, at home, at the Amex. Come on, Brighton. Oh, this is nerve-wracking. This is really... Our team is good, man. Our team is really good. But the fear is always going to be there. Come on, get it done. Oh, my God, we get it done on penalties. We get it done on penalties as we take down Bill Bow. Oh my God. All right, we're through to the quarters. That is terrifying though. We need a phenomenally better performance if we're going to take down PSG. We barely scrape in against Bill Bow. We can't scrape past PSG. We need to be dominant on the field. That is the only way to beat PSG. They've got Killian and Barpe. It's two of the best strikers in world football. And Barpe versus Ferguson. First leg away at the Parc de Prince. Come on, Brighton. Oh, it's Mbappe giving PSG the advantage. We're going to need to step it up here in this second leg. We're going to have to come from behind, ladies and gentlemen. We have not been convincing in these knockout rounds. We're going to have to have the match of our life if we're going to continue the run here and continue the undefeated streak, taking on PSG at the Amex. The scoreline is a 2-1 loss. We have been eliminated this year, and we're going to have to fight it for another season. Let's get ourselves top four qualification again. Bloody Kylian Mbappe, man. Job done of qualifying for the Champions League again next season, but I would, I would have loved to win a Premier League title. We end up finishing third and just three points behind Arsenal. But we fall short of an FA Cup losing in the semis to West Ham. And we lost the Carabao Cup final to Brighton. This season was just so close, yet so far. Evan Ferguson got knocked off as the top goal scorer. Only 16 for him this season. Ulrich, 24. Fair play, my boy. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, the board have given us an exorbitant amount of money this season. And you bet your ass I'm spending it on somebody massive. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be 92 rated Pedri. We're going to spend 150 mil getting him across and making him a Brighton player. Oh, what a glorious sight this is to behold. We're back and we're beelining for a Champions League title. A lot of blue in this group. VFL Bochum. Arena. Yeah. All right. Cool. Whatever. Let's uh, let's take advantage of this and not do a Bayern Munich. All right. Perfect. We didn't do a Bayern Munich. We did exactly what we needed to do. And we have topped the group for the second straight year. Not a single loss. And we are back to where we belong. The Champions League knockout stages. The dream remains alive. And in the round of 16, we're taking on RB Leipzig. So we're going to have to make sure we are focused if we want to get back to the quarterfinals. PSG, they've got final. I'm keeping keeping one eye on them. We've been here before, lads. I'm not lying. I'm a little nervous. I'm always nervous in Champions League knockout round games. They have some quality players in there as well. First leg away in Leipzig at the Red Bull Arena. The scoreline is a 2-1 win. Trufer comes off the bench. The left back off the bench to give us the advantage. We might have the advantage, but we have no reason to feel comfortable about this. It's only a one goal lead and Leipzig a bloody good man. Come on, just get us back to the quarterfinals. Get us back to the quarterfinals. Perfect, 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 perfect. We get another 2-1 win. We're back to the quarters. Now things get extra scary. Quarterfinal time. This year, we have AC Milan. PSG is still alive. They're taking on Ajax, but we have AC Milan. All right, first leg is away here at the San Siro. Need to give ourselves an advantage like we did against Leipzig. Hopefully better than we did against Leipzig. But Milan have got a good team, man. 
Charles de Quetelet, Edwards, Elliot, Raspadori. Oh, Magnin, here we go. Here goes nothing. Come on, Brighton. Oh, true fur again. This dude has been underrated in this Champions League campaign. He saves our ass. I'm nervous, lads. This is where we fell last year. I don't want to. I don't want to get cursed when it comes to Champions League quarterfinals. I don't want this to become a habit. Screw it. Quick sim. Hands are up. Hands are tied. And we're through. It's Ferguson. Oh my god, that is a legendary performance. 89th minute, he equalizes it to send it to extra time. And then in the 109th minute, he scores the winner. Nah, Ferguson, I have to stand and applaud, my friend. That is absolutely incredible from you. We're through to the semis. And PSG are out. Oh my God, Ajax have eliminated PSG. This is ironic. Bayern Munich finished last in our group last year, and now we have them in the semi-finals. This will be fun. First leg is on the road at the Allianz Arena. I'm not going to lie. I've done a pretty poor job of managing some of our key players' stamina levels, and I'm hoping that doesn't bite us in the arse here. First leg in Munich is a one-all draw. I can live with that. Willick and Buna... What? No, I'm not even going to try saying that. I think I just might have had a strong... It is time. It is time. It is time, my friends. Champions League semi-finals, second leg at home. We're in front of our home fans, and we're trying to get ourselves a Champions League final spot booked. Can we get it done? Here we go. Come on. Trying to push. Pedri against his former side. And we do it. True Fur again is there. Ferguson and Ulrich. Who else? We're through to a Champions League final with Brighton. And it is going to be Ajax who is standing between us and our UEFA Champions League title and completion of this video. Ajax have come out with an absolute vengeance here. They are passing us to death. Thank no. Oh my God. I, I can't even know how to pass. Ferguson. Oh, great ball over the top. Pedri. Pedri shoots it. Oh, it's good save. Well done from the keeper to hold on to that one. See that run. Good run. Go on. Rollheiser. Our man that did it in Argentina is going to give us the lead here in England. It is Rollheiser giving us the lead in the Champions League final. Jimenez defending against Skov Olsen. What a block from Kemp. Did you guys see that block from Kemp? Oh my God. Defend. Skov Olsen. Don't let him square it. Don't want to save from Kiss. No shots. Oh, we've conceded, but they're offside. Thank the Lord for that. All right, it is honestly shoot on sight right now that I know it's a bloody outfielder. Go on. Rollheiser. Shooting green, beaming, and that's what happens. That's what happens when you shoot on sight and you put a winger in goals. What a belter. Great ball there. Oh, Ferguson. That's the world's luckiest bounce. That's 3-0. The keeper's never going to stop it. And we're going to be European champions, surely, with Brighton. Come on, I want four. I want four. Ayala, back post. Get the ball. Ferguson. Oh, that's going to be an own goal. Or was it Ferguson? I don't know, but this is a murder right now. What a roller coaster of emotions that Champions League final was. But we have officially done it, lads. We've won an Asian Champions League. We've won a CONMEBOL Libertadores, the South American Champions League. And in a second, we will have officially won a UEFA Champions League. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. We have officially won all three Champions League titles. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.